docker for jam so you can load it with an executable and it provides an encapsulation a whole virtual machine and it will run that executable indefinitely in that virtual machine for you uh, in a standard environment that you uh, that you know is going to work exactly as you expect so core vm emulates a machine with near x64 speed it's risk 5 compatible and therefore targetable by rust c c++ or indeed anything that can target llvm it has paged memory so you get just a regular 32 bit address space nothing special going on here it's normal it has continuous execution nothing special going on here it's normal not normal for blockchain normal for software developers does message passing comes as standard it can run normal software compiled from normal languages using normal abstractions so in this container this kind of docker we can run normal software software that's not meant for that blockchain software like doom Now, if this works, and I, this is the first time I've, uh, I've tried this. Okay, well, I might, uh, I might be all right. Let's have a look. Uh, okay, I can see up here, that's good. Um, I am going to um, run this little script. Now, what this script is doing is it's creating a small test net of six nodes. All the nodes live on this laptop, which means they're not going to be running at full jam speed, but it'll be enough. Um, those six nodes, uh, which are uh, have six validators, therefore, and two um, cores are... Uh, uh, let me put this window over here. There we go. Um, are processing the Doom executable. <laughs> And there is another process running, which is monitoring the jam chain and the jam DA and feeding frames out of the DA in here. The frames are timestamped on the chain, right? And it's reading the frames from the DA that the chain is producing and according to the timestamp displaying them in this window. So in real time right now, and you can kind of see it, if you look in the background, every six seconds, a block is produced, which provides six seconds of doom frames. And we're just displaying those doom frames. This isn't a special version of doom. This is just doom. I just targeted it to PVM. Yeah. There's a little bit extra that basically is a graphics driver. <laughs> that just takes the virtual frame buffer and sticks it in the DA. And other than that, this is unmodified Doom. This isn't using much of a core, right? You can probably run 20 or 30 Dooms, maybe more, in a Jam core. And Jam has 341 cores. Jam is a supercomputer you can run regular software unmodified on jam now this will keep going for a while yet but uh, i i should really get along with the talk so um unfortunately you're gonna have to tear your eyes away uh, now in principle we could make that demo um do some uh input as well like we could have people send transactions to jam for like how to move right that, that that's just going through the regular um sort of uh, uh demo sequence that it, that it does if you just run the executable so let's have a quick re uh, review of what was happening there uploaded onto jam is the core vm service this, this is like docker for jam inside of docker for jam there is a container that just has the doom executable right together with actually i think actually it's core vm that has this virtual frame buffer that just uses the da for storing frames 
There's an off-chain sequencer that's basically just pinging this thing, just saying, make the next six seconds of frames. Now the DA is used to read the RAM that, do, that, that, that was in this virtual machine, right? So basically, Every time, the, every time the virtual machine generates another six seconds worth of frames, at the end of that, totally without Doom's knowledge, that memory, that the whole of the RAM, is being parceled up and put into Jams DA. Jams DA store. At the beginning of the next one, totally unbeknown to Jam, that RAM is being read from the DA store and placed back inside the virtual machine. From Doom's perspective, nothing has changed. It's just continuous execution. In addition to this RAM that's going in and out at the end of the six seconds, also we output the video frames, the, basically the output of the graphics card into the DA as well. And because we have 12 megabytes for every six seconds of DA access, this is fine. Now, we have a separate process outside of JAM that's monitoring this Core VM service to see when new frames have been generated. And then inside of the Core VM service on the chain, it gets given the references, the cryptographic um, commitments to where the frames are in the DA store. And then separately it uses those to grab the frames and display them in a window. So how are we doing this? Well, Jam, we have our data lake. It's only with this massive amount of bandwidth that we could possibly do this. Like, there is no way you could execute Doom on Ethereum. Um, we also pipeline a lot. We do one accumulate at the same time as doing another refine. And in fact, we pipeline even more than that. We can, our accumulate is so, even 10 milliseconds, it doesn't seem very much compared to five seconds, but it's actually more than we would otherwise be able to do in a synchronous system because we actually pipeline blocks. And we do this with a very special trick. Instead, for those who know about block uh, data structures, instead of providing inside of the block header, the post, the posterior state root, a commitment to everything that the block after the block is executed, we only put in the block header the prior state root, a commitment to what it began with. This allows the author of the block and all of the other validators to execute the block more or less simultaneously. If you require the author to execute the block before they can send the header off to the other validators, they cannot do it simultaneously. And unless you're using the same validator for block after block after block, then you'll end up having this sort of, the author executes the block, the sends it to the other validators, the other validators execute the block, one of them then authors the next block, and you're kind of um, uh, alternating, right? And this means you're gonna get about, you're gonna get less than half of the possible execution time. But because we do the prior state route, we can really squeeze out um, that amount of execution time in accumulate in the synchronous portion. And of course, we have the PVM, which allows us to pack everything up, store it in the DA and unpack it next, uh, next block without anyone noticing, without Doom noticing. And it's fast enough and it's a normal machine, so it can be targeted by regular software like Doom. <laughs>